Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Courtney. I don't know if you have come over from TikTok or not, so I figured I would introduce myself. I have not done a tarot reading on here in a very long time, and today I am really feeling called to do a long, drawn out reading where I kind of like unravel the message in real time. I know the topic that I want to discuss right now, but I don't have any cards pulled and I do have my journal here because I, I kind of want to figure this out for myself and for my collective and just kind of see where this message goes. So we have a couple decks that I want to use today. I have my Rider Tarot deck. I also have my tried and true Soul Cats Companion Tarot deck. And I felt called, I normally don't use these, um, but I have my Through the Eyes of the Soul Oracle deck. I also have the book that goes with this. When it comes to Oracle cards, I love referring to the book that comes with the deck. So when I get to the Oracle cards, I may or may not read the descriptions. I may pull a couple. I may just pull one. I don't really know. But what I want to get into today is the idea of the father wound and the masculine energy kind of... It, it's essentially the idea of the father wound. It's, you know, this is going to resonate for people who um, have either a strained relationships, strained relationship with their father, an absent father, a father who was emotionally disconnected um, or continues to be emotionally disconnected um, and, and how that has affected your life, um, your relationships and all of that. And, and not only do I feel this affecting the current collective, I feel like this is something that, um, especially in terms of this particular reading, I feel like we're going to be tapping into an energy that goes back centuries for some reason. That's why I really want this to be um, very much drawn out because the way that this started, the kind of thought that was dumped into my head is the idea of masculinity. And what that means and and where it has gone um, and, and the effects of that so first and foremost let me just get a couple cards out because I do I do truly fear feel fear feel um, yeah the, the king of wands is kind of where it all starts for me um, the King of Wands to me is the type of king that has earned his crown through battle, through overcoming battle, through having strength, through um, that idea of to be a man is to be protective, to be a man is to be the head of household, to be a man is to be, you know, the, the breadwinner, the one that supports the family. And going back, you know, centuries, it's, you know, the, the man was the one who was that sort of I'm getting like hunter gatherer energy like the man was the one that was going out while the mother or like the feminine energy was the one that was kind of more of that caretaking you know I, I guess if you want to get into gender roles it could be that cooking cleaning aspect while the man is out providing this type of energy I'm really, really glad the Eight of Cups and the Ace of Cups in reverse has come out. Right now we have Strength in reverse, we have the Eight of Cups, we have the Ace of Cups in reverse, we also have the Four of Pentacles, and we have the Five of Swords. So where this energy goes and, and that that overarching to be the man is to focus on the material and the stability and the strength... Um, it kind of leaves out the emotional aspect. You know, where does that emotional aspect go? Where does the softness go? Where does that, um, where does the feminine energy get to come in when we're dealing with a masculine? And I think that that is what has broken down so many family dynamics, so many relationship dynamics, um, and, and so many personal dynamics as well. I think on a, like a societal scale, we're in such a masculine um 
centered society where we've become so focused on the material, so focused on the um, kind of goal setting, quick moving, structural, yeah, wow, King of Wands coming out twice here. Both decks having the King of Wands on the bottom. That's really interesting to me. Um, so with this idea of to be a masculine is to be the caretaker and, and to be the one that kind of runs things. It, it, it's kind of, when you think of masculine energy in this way, you think that they're the one with all the power. And so that I think has led to a society that is very male dominated. It's very much um, dominated by the idea of masculinity where we're all working really hard, especially in the United States where um, so much of our society is based on how much work we get done and how productive we are. Um, but on the other side of that, there is kind of a breakdown of community and softness and um, emotional dynamics. I think there, we're moving into a time of so much isolation. Um, and I think we've been there for a long time. And, and it, it's starting to show itself or it continues to show itself in relationships with ourselves and with other people. To, to be vulnerable in the masculine energy is, is to me, it's, I think in so many ways, masculine energies equate vulnerability and emotion with weakness. Um, I keep getting this example coming through of, um, Mm. This is really interesting. I need to just breathe for a second. Spirit is like really making sure that I stay in line with this message and I already feel like I'm moving really fast. Um, but I keep getting the, this, um, this idea of men and occupations. So whether that is, you know, the corporate climbing the corporate ladder, I'm also seeing the military coming in, like the, the going off and, and fighting and the woman staying at home. Um, I feel like we're, we're, we're moving out energetically of that, of that timeline. We're moving into a more kind of feminine dominated timeline and our feminine energy dominated timeline. Things are kind of balancing out. And I, I feel like the, the dismantling of all of this masculine energy is really highlighting um, many of the patterns that all of us, men and women, masculine, feminine, um, where there's been too much masculine energy. And so I feel like for this collective in particular, um, this is a very uncomfortable process because a lot of wounds are coming to the surface. I feel like there's been such a shift in the last month specifically, even the last couple weeks to the last week in particular. Um, tensions are at an all time high, you know, with in, in terms of internally, in terms of relationally, com like in a community and as well as society and global tensions. Like global tensions are at an all time high, but I feel like you can funnel it down. Um, into an individual basis where I think a lot of us are really kind of waking up to the patterns that cause us a lot of wounds in our relational relationship life um, and how that kind of started in childhood with our relationships with our father figures. So for many people in this collective, like I said, you dealt with a dad who was not emotionally there for you or physically there for some people it was both but for some people i'm getting even if they were there there's this sense of like my dad never hugged me growing up or my dad never really said i love you or my dad and i don't have a close emotional relationship like he's either the one that provides the money or he provides you know the things but that emotional connection is not always there. There's this sense of, especially if, um, if you identify as somebody with a little bit more feminine energy, um, there can be a lot of tension present in this relationship because it turns into 
my value is what I can bring to the table, not who I am as a person. And so I think what this collective is running into a lot with this father wound is um, struggling with the idea of what you're worth, what your value is. And a lot of that um, I think is seen stop me one more time again these message are this 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 channel is kind of coming through me and it feels very messy that's why I have my notes over here just in case I feel like I need to write things down but if you are somebody who kind of struggles to follow along with just like a straight channeled message I highly recommend taking notes I don't know how long this is gonna go but I'm just gonna like unleash what I feel coming through here so in terms of relationships with father figures I think we're we're we have to think about it as not just relationship with your dad, but what is their relationship with their dad? What's the relationship beyond that? Like generations prior to this one and the one before it, you know, when, when we, when we think of our parents, we think of what they provided for us. We think of what they taught us, especially in childhood. And so there's this idea that you have to understand that, a parent is only going to pass down the lessons and the resources that they were taught. And they're only going to take in the lessons that they were taught. And it takes a, a special kind of parent and a, and a really strong relationship with the self to be able to get to a place where you go inward and you heal and you recognize and dismantle what you learned versus what you want to continue in generations. So, so this is saying like when you become a parent, it's on you to kind of reflect on what you were taught, what your what your parents taught you to then be able to teach your kids. So when you think about your life, when you think about your upbringing, um, it's it's not your fault what was passed down on you, but it is your your job to take accountability with not putting more toxic patterns or more generational trauma onto the generation that you bring into the world. So. In terms of like father energy, I feel like there's a sense with this father wound that we're talking about where there either wasn't an opportunity with the father figure and their father figure to have that emotional bond. Either their father figure was out of the picture or at this corporate job or off in the military or whatever it is. Um, or even if they weren't necessarily absent, that father figure, so this is like the grandfather or the great grand grandfather coming into this structure, not getting a, a, an emotional side of their own father. It's getting a very cold side, a very, and we're talking about years and decades and again, centuries ago where violence was something that is very much um, a, a, like a thing in parenting, especially like dad's parenting sons. It's, it's, it's a very much, uh, th there can be a lot of like violence and in that relationship abuse in that relationship and kind of like a crack of the whip in that relationship so a lot of masculine energy is obedience it's following the rules it's it's doing what you're told do as i say not as i do especially is something that's coming through here because we were dealing with previous generations not going inward, not bringing out that feminine side and thinking about, okay, what was I taught? What was, what was the structure that was passed down onto me? And does this feel right? There, there's so much energy around this wound of, um, do as I say, not as I do that, that is like the epitome of not going inward and and passing down the generational curses from gen from from one generation to the next, do as I say, not as I do. That whole phrase comes through to say, as somebody's child, these were put on me. These these rules, these obligations, these lessons, these were put onto me. Do as I say, not as I do, is another way of saying, I'm not going to, I'm, I'm not going to take accountability for what may be wrong. 
I'm not going to take accountability for the patterns that I was taught that I chose not to reflect on and grow from and heal from in order to not repeat these things. I'm, I'm, I'm not taking responsibility as the, the person of power in this dynamic to recognize that what I may be saying is not a reflection of who I am or, or the example that I'm trying to teach. There's like a whole accountability aspect missing from this dynamic. And so that do as I say and not as I do is something that is passed down over and over again. And so I think we're reaching a point where the do as I say, not as I do mantra as a parent is not working is not working energetically as a collective. We are moving into a place where just because you're my elder does not mean that I have to respect you. It does not mean that I have to follow your rules and follow your obligations. If I can see the true disconnect between what you're trying to put on me and how that is a wound that you decided not to heal from. Oof. <laughs> I need a sip of my coffee. Hold on, we're getting into this. See the see my throat heating up. My throat chakra is on fire right now. And and the throat chakra is kind of is 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 a huge pattern that I've been seeing because hold on, we're going to get into this. I've been seeing this collectively. I've been seeing this in myself. I've been seeing it in the people around me that I've been doing readings for or that I know where Especially if you are a woman or you identify more with a feminine energy, there is this sit down and shut up energy that has been put onto us because of this do as I say, not as I do pattern that was passed down in our families. So growing up, this collective, you're sensitive. You're super sensitive. This collective, if you're sitting here listening to this message, you have something in relation to me. So you're sensitive. Okay, you're sensitive. You can feel when energy is off. You can feel when that um, that toxicity is is being kind of like woven into relationships. You can see power struggle. You can see when somebody isn't taking accountability for their wounds and putting that onto you. However, as a child, you are not given the space to vocalize that. You are not given the space to vocalize when you had something wrong. Because especially to the father figure, so you were absolutely the type of person who to your dad or whoever that father figure was in your life, you did not express when things were wrong. You did not express your emotions because you were either told that you were too sensitive or it was inconvenient to that father figure that you grew up around to have to put up with the emotional wounds that you we're dealing with. So instead you learned how to internalize it. You didn't want to burden because it, it either caused an outburst. It either caused some type of abuse. It either caused some type of, um, uh, just like an anger or a frustration. Because again, this do as I say, not as I do creates a lack of emotional vulnerability. So when somebody who was not taught how to deal with emotional vulnerability is faced with it, they see that as weakness. They see that as too sensitive and they see that as a discomfort for them. Because how do you handle that when you were never given the resources to, to teach somebody else as to how to work through it? So going to a father figure specifically with an emotional problem or with um, a, a need to be heard for something makes them have to be like, okay, how do I deal with this? I don't know how. And the knee-jerk reaction often in those situations is to get angry or to shut you out, to put a band-aid on whatever the problem is so that there doesn't have to be that emotional vulnerability, that rawness. And, and so it, you were taught that we're not dealing with these emotional problems. We're just going to put a band-aid on them. And so instead, I, I think instead of dealing with your own vulnerabilities, you were able to internalize that. You were able to internalize other people's emotions. And you said... I'm not worthy enough. I don't have enough value to speak up when something is on my mind or something is on my heart. So instead, I'm going to be the type of person that helps other people deal with it. So many people who are empaths and so many people who are highly sensitive have a really, really rough relationship with the masculine energies in their life. This also plays into romantic relationships. The, the type of masculine energy that I think this collective has attracted in past relationships is one that does not allow them to express how they're feeling. 
It does not allow them to be that sensitive self. It does not allow them to show off or speak up their true emotions. There's a huge throat chakra closing. There's also a sacral chakra closing. Because that feminine energy, that playful energy, that expressive energy was dimmed. It was shut off. It was shut off so that the, the masculine energy in your life could be protected. So that the masculine energy in your life could be, wouldn't have to be inconvenienced. Because they don't know how to handle that. So in turn, you were taught that people don't know how to handle, how to handle you when you get emotional. Oh. This collective of people, in order to take note of how deeply this has affected you, because this is a case-by-case -case basis, but this goes back to childhood. And I think a lot of us are at the place now where we're adults and we're realizing a lot of our wounds. A lot of us have the wound of just running away when the going gets tough. A lot of us attract relationships friendships, jobs, where our value is not who we are, but what we can bring to the table. Because we see who we are as too sensitive, not good enough, weak. So instead of healing from that, because I think that masculine wound was in turn put on us a lot of our lives to, to just take that with us and to put that away we have embodied this king of wands energy ourselves so I think there has been a lot of and 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 first the king of wands energy is not a bad energy to be in when you know how to use it in balance with the queen of wands energy king of wands and queen of wands that blend is beautiful that is bringing out the masculine that's also bringing out the feminine energy and when the wands energy is used co collectively or together king and queen that's a very creative that's a very well-rounded energy that is a strength while also soft energy it's 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 really beautiful it's really um yeah oh my gosh when, when this energy is used correctly, you can step into the place of the magician. This queen of wands is very creative. It's very loving. It's very strong. It's very, um, it's, it's just a beautiful blend of masculine and feminine energy. It, it's, it just, it's overall, it's very balanced. But when the queen of wands is in reverse, which is, I think what happens when too much masculine energy comes in, it just hides the feminine. It hides that sensitive side. It, it hides the, um, the allowance for a flow to come in. It allows, it, it, it takes away um, the, the comfort in letting emotions flow through you because you were taught with all of this masculine king of wands energy that too much emotion means that you're weak. So I'm gonna talk in circles throughout this message. I know that I am, just bear with me. This collective is reaching a place where we're, we're really pulling apart this, this, this father wound in our present reality because this collective in particular has been on a healing journey and a lot of us idolized our father figures growing up without really addressing how much they hurt or disappoint us in many points of our lives. Whether you have a relationship with the, the masculine energy in your life or not, that father figure in your life or not, I feel like there is a really hard time with a lot of relationships just getting into the depth of what their influence and how their influence has shaped you, both good and bad. Because I, I, I think, I don't, I, no, no. We're not going to deal with that. We're, we're going to focus on the, the negative of this relationship because it, it has to be faced. It has to be faced. You need to get to a place where you understand and you don't have to um, understand this and turn your understanding into a rage or a hatred for this masculine figure or father figure in your life. But you do have to address how it has shaped you and what kind of patterns it has put on you. Because again, I'm seeing this energy of being very people pleasing 
this energy of not standing up for yourself. Oh my god, I just realized Queen of Wands in reverse. Holy crap, that came out in both spreads again. We have the King of Wands and the Queen of Wands in reverse in both tarot spreads. Oh my gosh. I've been staring at this card for the whole time and I'm like, what, what is it trying to tell me? And then I realized which card it was. As a collective, we are being asked at this time to use our throat chakra. And this scares us beyond belief because using our throat chakra has gotten us to the point every single time we have used it where it has, we've either gotten in trouble, we've been met with confrontation where so many of us are afraid of confrontation. We don't like confrontation, we don't like being wrong, we don't like being a burden, and so we've closed the throat chakra. We have become very protective over our emotional body. We've become very hyper aware of how other people move around us in order to not put our needs onto another person who does not feel like dealing with it. Again, this Eight of Cups energy comes in to talk about this, this avoidance, this walking away. People pleasing is a pattern, taking jobs based on what it looks like instead of how it appeals to our lifestyle is something that comes through. Being in relationships where it's either male dominated or masculine energy dominated. Um, so relationships where um, there's a power struggle, there is not really being heard, there is this, again, do as I say and not as I do, very much controlling energy present in the dynamic. It's this energy of kind of putting up with toxic traits. out of fear that speaking up and moving into a more healed energy which attracts healed relationships is gonna kinda undo everything that you know. But that's what's needed right now. This collective is, is waking up to almost like a lifelong um, pattern of, of, of attracting the wrong things, of attracting superficial relationships, superficial and material desires, and really missing the idea of what true unconditional love looks like. That's that's where we're moving, whether we see it or not, because again, I think tensions are really high um, on an individual scale, expanded all the way to a global scale. Our, our tensions are really high because the, the masculine dominated way of the world is being dismantled. That's why there's so much discomfort. The feminine energy, the feminine aspect is coming in and this disrupts and breaks down a lot of personal patterns. So there's, there's a lot of shifts happening. There's a lot of relationships that are being really highlighted to say, you know, this existed in your life because you didn't value yourself and so you attracted people that you had to prove yourself to. There, there's a lot of like need to go through your childhood, go through your adolescence, go through your, your young adulthood and really reflect on what kind of friendships did you attract? And, and were those friendships um, ones that you could truly feel like yourself in or were they friendships that um, were based on traits that were passed down to you by the masculine energy? So were they, Did they make you feel good or did their approval when you did something right make you feel good? There's this energy of like, could you fully let your, your walls down or your and your guard down and show all sides of you? Or were, was it the type of friendship or relationship where you had to put on a mask and when you wore that mask, you trained yourself to wear it in such a way that when things were good, they were really good. But then when you took that mask off every now and then to try to see like, oh, do they really like like me and, and, and accept me for who I am? When you started to take that mask off, then their backs turned on you. That's the type of relationship dynamic that I'm, I'm seeing a lot of people running into is this 
I'm going to say and do all of the things that are going to have you accept me and approve of me. There's a lot of approval, like seeking approval in relationships. Um, and I'm going to get to a place where I, I'm going to be as obedient as possible and, and take care of your needs as much as possible, whether in friendships, romantic relationships, jobs. Um, and then when we get to a point where I think I can start taking off my mask and showing who I truly am, I'm going to, I'm going to test it every now and then. And I, and I feel like in the past, every single time you went like this and, and took off that mask, you were met with heartbreak. So you're being asked right now as a collective to really address this heartbreak and really address where this came from in particular, because you didn't attract these relationships because they felt good. You attracted these types of relationships because you didn't necessarily, uh, you weren't aware of, or you didn't want to address the father wound that existed in your life. You're now in a place where so many people in this collective are seeing a shift. You've done a lot of healing. And so your next layer of healing is this father wound. And that's a really, really uncomfortable wound to address. It's like, it's like getting to the core of so many relationship struggles, so many power struggles, so many um, patterns of accepting jobs and putting yourselves in environments based on what you could give to others, how you could take care of others, how you could make sure that you covered up the behaviors of others so that they didn't have to take accountability for themselves. Accountability is a huge thing here. I think you took on the responsibility of covering up wounds or making excuses for or um, justifying masculine wounds in certain people and establishments because you were so afraid of disrupting the status quo. This took a healing journey to, to get to a place where at least for yourself, you weren't going to do that anymore. So this, I think, has come with a lot of relationships ending, a lot of friendships ending. A lot of people have gotten away from the corporate nine to five and are moving into a more entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial, whatever, you know the word I'm trying to say, um, path. And, and for yourself... It's been beneficial, but it also put you in this kind of hermit mode. And so this, um, I think a lot of people have been, become very comfortable with kind of, it's pouring rain, um, that, that strip down and strip back process of really recognizing where the, the father wound plays a role in yourself has been comfortable because it's, it's allowed you to address that there is a father wound in the first place. It's allowed you to address the fact that the do as I say and not as I do is no longer going to be something that you tolerate. And so the identification of the father wound is one thing, but the application of moving forward and healing that father wound is another thing. And that's where I think this collective sits right now because we are moving into this queen of wands energy. This Queen of Wands energy is, is a gorgeous energy, but there, there's, there is change required in all types of dynamics, especially in terms of close relationships and self-value that's going to allow this Queen of Wands energy to come in. So first and foremost, I need a sip of my coffee. <laughs> I hope that this is going somewhere. It's the type of channel where I'm not going to remember a single word of this when it's over, but it's just kind of flowing. So we're going to let it keep flowing. Becoming the Queen of Wands. Stepping into the Queen of Wands. You're discovering your value in this collective. You are discovering your value. You are understanding that your value has nothing to do with how much money you have, what type of job you have, what your status is. Your value is how authentic you are. And showing up authentically means opening up this throat chakra and speaking your truth, expressing yourself and your ideas no matter what that looks like to other people. Do you know how long I've had this sweater and refused to wear it in public because I was so afraid of what people think of me when in reality I am obsessed with this sweater? Like I, I, I love 
this sweater. I, it, this is such a, like a small example, but like in the past, because of my own issues with this wound, I have attracted friendships in my life and experiences in my life where if I ever showed up in, in a room with this on, the ridicule, the shame, the embarrassment, the stares, the what is wrong with you that would come from the people that I was looking at would be enough to not only have me set this on fire, even though it's something that I love, but also go through everything that I have and everything I own to make sure nothing of the sort ever shows up on me again. And that closes my throat chakra. That shuts me off from being myself and expressing myself. And it it, it totally puts me in this place of conditioning myself to follow the rules and stick to the status quo of the relationship dynamic that I had before. Where I'm going with this message is that those relationships have or are coming to an end. Because as you go through this father wound, as you go through your self-concept and the idea of who you are, the more you get into this healing and the more you identify the things that you truly love. Queen of Wands is a, is a queen of passion. This is like the most incredible embodiment of, of feminine energy. This is also very uh, sacral chakra highlighted as well. So your sacral chakra is all about your creativity. It's all about your self-confidence. It's all about how you show up in the world. It's, it's all about just like your soothing practices. It, it, there's so much beauty and like just incredible energy that comes with the sacral chakra, but the sacral and the throat combined, um, that's a force to be reckoned with when both of those chakras are, are open. And so to get into this queen of wands energy, you're not only identifying who you are, what you like, what you value, but it's being confident enough to put that out there and interact with other people, knowing that no matter what they think you're standing in this, you're wearing this sweater. You are doing the hobby that you love to do. You are saying no. You are setting boundaries. And then I think that this is um, a really a, a strong battle to go forward with because stepping into this while having a father wound means rewiring your brain, essentially. It means unlearning all of the the... It means unlearning all of that over masculine kind of egoic energy that was put on you. You you are now at this place where you have accepted the lessons and the 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 tools and and the all of the things that were taught to you by the unhealed energy in your life and you are now at this place where you can either keep going down the path of not healing from your wounds and taking accountability in order to fix it, heal it, and then pass down a new version of you that is authentic and values um, healed relationships, unconditional love, open mind, acceptance, all of those things. It's case by case again. But you are now at this place that the masculine father figure was at before. They chose not to take accountability and heal. They then pass down those unhealed lessons onto you. You are now at this place where you get to decide, am I gonna keep going down this path or am I gonna unlearn those things and rewire my brain to pass down healing, to pass down, whether you want kids or not, but like pass around. Doesn't even necessarily need to be passed down. It can just be passed around in the relationships that currently exist in your life. You are learning unconditional love. You are learning true relationships, true love, what actually matters in this life. And so there's a lot of unfamiliarity with that. So there's a lot of discomfort as well. You're really being asked to take inventory of the emotional connections in your life right now and, and sort out which ones are true to what you value as an authentic individual 
and which ones still keep you in that place of overdoing it, people pleasing, overgiving, having to be somebody that you're not, having to wear these masks because we're reaching a place where we're in this divide. Okay, as, as a society, as a globe, like we're, we're coming into a divide. And if you choose not to address the unhealed patterns that were put on you, you're going to continue them. You're going to continue them and you're going to reach a place in your life where you are so aggravated, you are so angry, you are so irritable because you can feel that that's not who you are. You can feel that the connections that you're, are in your life continue to get you to a place of a dead end. You want to go deeper. This collective wants to go deeper. You want that, that love in your life. You want those friendships in your life. You want that career that feels like an open heart chakra. By opening your throat chakra, you also open your heart chakra. That, when you don't have an open throat chakra, you sit in this place, especially with that, that energy coming in through your crown, you sit in this place of being in your head. You let your brain and your ego take over your decisions. You make decisions that are based on what you and your ego think are most comfortable to fit in in this life. And that's where kind of like the soul and the ego come in. This really, this reading is getting, we're like peeling back another layer right now. But there, there's forks in the road and it starts up here. And it starts with mind or uh, the brain or the head and the heart. So when you're living in your head, you're living in your ego and your ego is the voice of who you are in this body. So I'm Courtney, whoever is watching this, you're you, your name in this life. This is one individual life and we are here in this individual life to get one step closer or a multiple steps closer, but, but the goal is to get closer to coming home to our soul. I, Courtney in this life, I'm so much more than Courtney. My soul exists within me and my soul was here before me and my soul will continue to exist after Courtney and Courtney's body are no longer here. The soul is infinite. And the soul's journey is the journey of coming home to the self. And so part of stepping into this body, this body of Courtney, this, this life of Courtney, is to learn the lessons of dismantling the ego in order to move forward on a soul path so that Courtney's soul can keep going. This is like, we're getting, we're getting deep into this, but like the purpose of our soul is to come home to ourselves. And, and the more we all come home to ourselves on a soul level beyond just this life, the, the higher the vibration lifts collectively. And the more we come together as like, not only like union with ourselves and union with the right people, romantic partners, like the, the circle of soul, like soul families, like the more, the more we are vibrationally aligned with our soul, we find those twin flames. We find the soulmate connections. We find the soul family. And the more that the soul families come together, like the more community there is, the more harmony there is, the more we like elevate as a, as a world and as um, like a 3D reality into a place of peace. But in order to do that, we have to dismantle the ego. And I think so much of this, this masculine wound, this father wound is, is, is in the ego. So we're living up here. We're living in our head. We're, we're living by what our brain thinks is the right thing to do. And we're not listening to our heart at all. The reason why we're not listening to our heart is because we can't get to this heart. We can't get to this heart chakra yet because our throat chakra is blocked. It's like the, all of the, the energy is caught up here in our brains. And so being able to access that heart chakra means being able to speak the truth, being able to really think about how we want to express ourselves, who in our lives we feel like we can tr truly be ourselves around and truly open up to in order to feel that heart to heart connection. That's why when, when we talk about like those heart to heart conversations we have with people, those are like the really deep, true, raw, vulnerable conversations that we have with one another that go beyond the surface level, that go beyond the brain, that go beyond that protective layer of like hide your emotions and keep to yourself. Those heart to heart conversations, those are soul based conversations. And so we're really being asked to like get rid of this blockage up here 
Because I, I, I truly think that like once we unlock the throat chakra, all of that energy can move down into the rest of our bodies. Our, our, our heart chakras open up and, and when our heart chakras open up, that energy moves even further into the solar plexus chakra, which is all about connecting with our inner child. When your heart chakra opens up, you start moving in a way that is purposeful. You start connecting with the things that you truly enjoy. The things that you truly enjoy started in childhood. When you think back to your childhood, you were drawn to certain things, whether it was animals, whether it was art, whether it was sports, whether it was music, whatever it was. Those things that are true to your heart started in childhood. Your solar plexus is all about inner child. It's all about joy. It's all about happiness. The things that make you happy are all in line with your heart. The more that you open up your solar plexus chakra, you then access your, your sacral, which is interesting because I always go from the root up, but this time I feel like it's, it's really necessary to go from the crown down. Because this energy is like, as much as it's coming up from the earth, it's also like as above, so below. And so like we're starting with the crown and this energy, I see like the energy moving down in order. Oh, okay. So this is what I'm getting. So we're connecting with our inner child. We're feeling that joy. We're feeling that playfulness come in. And as we figure out what we love and what we figure out what makes us feel playful and happy and silly and all that, we start practicing that. That's sacral. We start figuring out our self-soothing techniques. We start figuring out the five senses and what really feels good and what makes us feel sensual and creative, what makes us feel really relaxed in our relationships. And from there, we solidify our root chakra. We solidify our personal foundation. We come home to who we are. And then we can be grounded in that. And then we can work our way back up. It's almost like we have to break ourselves down from our crown chakra because we have to get rid of this conditioning that has been put on the brain. And as we come down and that energy kind of goes, it's it's like the breakdown, the breakthrough, and then the build up again. So it's like we're in this place of dismantling and purging out all of that extra energy, that conditioned energy that says you have to do this and you have to close yourself off and you have to be over masculine and all this stuff. We're, we're pushing, I can, I can just like feel this energy like pushing all the way down into the root chakra, purging it from our system. And then once we're cleared out, then we start from the root chakra and we build our way back up. We start building a life based on a solid sense of who we are, based on those solid routines of self-reflection, relaxation, five senses, like really tapping into that self-care those creative aspects, we start playing more, we start spending time with our inner child more, we start to attract relationships that allow us to feel safe to do so, that opens up our throat, our heart chakra. As we get more familiar with the people that are close to us and that love us for who we truly are, we can keep opening that throat chakra even more, expanding. As we speak our truth, as we move into places, environments, and relationships that allow us to speak on who we are, our intuition gets stronger. We start to realize that we're in a path of alignment and we start to bring in manifestations because we're slowly but surely embodying the authentic version of who we are. We're connecting with our third eye and then I have the chills and then we are truly aligned with our guides. We can tell which messages in spirituality and our, from our guides are for us versus the ones that are ego-based. We can really fine tune who we are aligned with and the messages that are here for us and not for nothing, but we also figure out what our own message is in, our own message is in this life because we all have spiritual wisdom. We all have a message to share with the collective or with a small group of people or even globally, but we all have that spiritual wisdom inside of us and that is all crown chakra. And so in order to find those messages, get those downloads, be able to meditate and be still and like not be running off to the next thing and like thinking about all the responsibilities that you have to do in order to get to that place of personal peace where you are giving yourself that time and space to meditate and allow that spiritual wisdom to come in. As you do that, you create and develop your relationship with the universe. You identify as a co-creator with the universe and you move into alignment in a higher vibration. Holy moly. It's like the labyrinth is clearing. It's so insane. Like I'm just seeing like this, what is it called? Like prana, like the, like the chakra energies. I'm seeing it literally like 
coming down and clearing us all out and then building us up into a whole different way of life. And it all starts with a father wound. <laughs> Whoa. This channel is ending abruptly, but it, it's very, it, it, I'm kind of getting like this spiritual, like that was the grand finale of this message energy kind of coming through. That was incredible. If you have any questions, I want you to leave them in the comments. If you want any one-on-one -on -one clarity, excuse me, I do offer one-on-one -on -one readings if you want to go further, but that... That, oh, I'm going to have to go back and, and watch that because that was incredible. Um, I think that will be where we close it. So many of you watching have a life right now that is going to look so different in the next few years. You, so many of you are moving into such a soft life. And if you're not at that place yet, it's okay, but there's a soft life coming in for so many of you. There is divine union coming in with so many of you, but I, it needs to start. The idea, the idea of like union with another. We can get lost in that because we start thinking about what love looks like and, and what the other person can 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 provide for us and, and union with another comes from union with yourself. So in terms of romantic relationships and coming into that union and, and twin flames and all that, I don't like doing like twin flame readings and, and any of that stuff because I think twin flames is overused and I think I'm not even going to get into it, but, um, but, I, but I do think that they exist. I do think that twin flames exist, but it, it comes from such a deep place of self-love and self-worth. And so if you are somebody who believes that you have a twin flame in your life or you, you can feel yourself energetically moving closer, do not focus on where the other person is. Do not focus on where those relationships lie outside of yourself. You need to focus on getting deep, as deep as possible into a relationship with yourself. You need to get to a place where you break yourself down and build yourself back up into true authenticity because that's when those type of relationships come in. And those relationships only get stronger the more you focus on your own self-care, your own relationship with your spirit guides and your spirituality and your healing. Your relationship with another is going to build up as you build up your relationship with yourself. The further you stray from yourself, the further you stray from the connections that are meant to you for you. So hone in on yourself and those relationships that are meant for you are going to follow suit. It is 2 2 2 p.m. I am closing this message here. I love you all. Let me know if that message was helpful and I will talk to you all very soon.